want to kind of give us a brief introduction um, of yourself and uh, my cool class cooperative. Um, my name is John Hayes. I'm the creator and one of the co-founders of My Cool Class Cooperative Limited. Um, I had this idea last year as after the pandemic hit. I've been teaching as an ESL teacher, English um, online for the past five years. And over the last you know, two years, it's just incredibly gotten worse and worse and worse. The pay has gotten lower and lower and lower. Even though there's more students coming on, there's more companies. Um, just like Uber or Deliveroo or all the other ones, they're exploiting teachers. They're gig workers. Um, and you hear all the rant and rave about, you know, how bad Uber is and, you know, Deliveroo and so many other platforms. But no one's talked about teachers at all. Uh, it's almost as people think of teachers as a different classification, but there are hundreds of thousands of teachers that are freelancers that are teaching online and have been forced to go online um, over the past you know, year, year and a half. So myself personally, I teach with uh, one of the big Chinese companies. I, Crossing my fingers, I am able to leave here <laughs> very soon. But I'm actually making um, almost half as much as I was about a year ago um, because of the practices of these companies. You know, they they want to have as many teachers as possible. So, you know, they look big and have a selection. But most of these platforms, they have it set up where okay, when, if you only have, you know, five students a week, we're charging you 33%. If you have, you know, a little bit more, we'll go down to, you know, 22% and then, you know, maybe 18%. But they deliberately keep these platforms so oversaturated with teachers that no teacher is getting full-time, which is forcing teachers to work on three, four, even five different platforms just to, you know, make ends meet. Um, not to mention the, you know, you're an at will, uh, you're an at will subcontractor, especially working with all the big Chinese companies, you know, they have, uh, fine systems. Uh, if you're more than one second late, uh, you know, you lose a third of your pay, even though sometimes you stay two or three minutes over. Um, I know of teachers that got fined lost money for actually drinking water during class, which is just insane. Um, a couple of the other practices that's going on is the company I work for, your pay is determined on a point system. So each class you teach, you get points. Now that's what they're doing. They're oversaturating the platform so it's harder and harder for teachers to get the classes. So that's why my pay has actually dropped. Even though I'm teaching the same amount of classes, I'm not getting all the extras in. They changed the point system. Um, and interestingly enough, but not surprising, Preply, one of the biggest uh, language platforms out there right now, they've been around for a while. Uh, they're also one of the most exploitative platforms with teachers. And their lead investors are also the lead investors that started up Deliveroo. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, and then, you know, they have the hands in, you know, Upwork, who are, you know, for freelancers mm -hmm. and all of them. So, you know, Couchsurfing, they're actually even one of the investors behind them too. The, the uh, yes, because Couchsurfing used to be a more kind of, pseudo cooperative platform and kind of sold out is my understanding i we yeah got they one sold out in 2017 I'm, I'm a hardcore couch surfer mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why i'm living in poland now i uh, after i quit my job in california i was a private detective for 10 years as a pi in san francisco and i just just burned out quit sold everything bought a one-way ticket to istanbul and i couch surfed from turkey all the way to ireland over you know a nine-month period so I just really fell in love with that. And then it did sell out and go corporate. And I ended up here in Poland. Um, and teaching English is really one of the few jobs you can get outside of the tech industry if you move outside of the United States. It's, you know, that's your guaranteed, well-paid job teaching English. So 
Um, so, so yeah, with my. Oh, I, I, I was just going to say. So it sounds like um, that, that this online, uh, in, you know, teaching industry was already a big thing before the pandemic, um, it was. and so there's a, a lot of you know, so there's a lot of people doing this, um, and so how did you go from being you with you know this thought that you know we should do you know something that's you know focused around the teachers um, to you know doing this co-op thing? What was that process for you? Um, How'd you get other people on board? Well, um, my, well, my fiance, actually, she, she's a graphic designer and illustrator and, you know, the pandemic hit her really bad too, being, you know, mostly a freelancer as well. So she had a lot of time, um, you know, I'm working, you know, just teaching my English classes and, you know, we wanted something better. I've been familiar with cooperatives for, for many years. Um, when I was 18 years old, I actually did undercover security at, uh, at a food co-op in Sacramento, um, which is, <laughs> so that's how I first got involved with co-ops and familiar with them. I've done a lot of activism since I was a teenager, you know, 16, the, is when I, the Iraq war broke out. So, uh, <laughs> Um, so I've been doing activism for about 20 years. So I've been familiar, you know, with worker cooperatives and, you know, being stuck in the, you know, being stuck at home all the time for the past year. It just really inspired me to investigate well, what will it take for to start a teacher cooperative, a platform cooperative. How much does this really cost? Because I know these investors are making big bucks. So, you know, I was able to... Um, I was able to find, you know, a very affordable learning management system, used, you know, my organizational skills. I've done lots of management stuff in the past, um, you know, in different sectors. And I talked to my buddy, Scott, who's also an American expat living in Poland. He's been teaching for 16 years. And I just started telling everyone I knew about it. Uh, kind of started putting the idea together myself, just the three of us. Uh, my Ursula, she's one of the directors too, one of the co-founders and directors of the cooperative. And she started putting the website together and we just started, you know, screaming as loud as we could, telling everyone about it. And all of these, you know, there's hundreds if not thousands of teaching groups on Facebook. So once we had our website up, we just started spamming them, you know, as much as we can to draw attention. Because in all these teaching groups, all you see are complaints. There are more complaints than like help on, you know, getting teaching jobs. It's just this company is horrible. Um, another interesting thing, it's really sad. There's a teacher who had her uh, spleen erupt and she had to go to the emergency room and she had to cancel all of her classes. And if you cancel more than eight classes in a month, then you can actually be fired or removed for, you know, X amount of time. So, you know, she had a, she was teaching, you know, 12 classes in a day. So if she had to cancel, you know, whole day's worth of classes within 24 hour notice, she risks losing her job. So besides sending, you know, a doctor's note, hey, I'm in the emergency room, whatever, they actually asked her to send a picture and they That's actually ridiculous. denied her appeal with a picture, you know, with stitches, you know, on her gut. I mean, it's, it's, it's just insane. So, yeah, so I just started rallying teachers and, um, you know, there are a lot of questions. I started doing the homework on where can I, where can I make this happen? What jurisdiction is this possible? And I'm in Poland. Poland is not a cooperative friendly country with really high taxes. I would need to be a Polish citizen, which I'm not, can't work there. I looked at California's laws. Um, I don't, I've been outside of the US, you know, six years now. So I don't have any close contacts in California. I would need um, a director in California to do it anyhow. And so I was shopping around and, you know, I got familiar with uh, Cooperatives UK and mm -hmm. I, ran into I ended up meeting Sean Sean Wellens if you're familiar with him mm -hmm. yeah with principal yeah, yeah. six and uh, he said come here I'll take you under my wing we hired him as a consultant and he's really been a blessing and has helped us set everything up so 
we've been working with him since February and we were officially registered on April 15th. So just shy of two weeks ago. So nice. everything's good. So you've, so you've been in the midst of a membership drive then it sounds like, um, which I know a lot of, uh, that I'm more familiar with from like consumer co-ops. That's, you know, a thing that, you know, food co-ops always have to do right at the beginning and usually kind of ongoing forever is just, you know, endless membership drive. Um, so how, how successful has that been? How are you um, actually uh, at a point where you're getting, if not actual membership uh, uh, donations or payments rather not donations um, or have you gotten? Yeah, you know, I, I'll, uh, I'll break that down for you. So, um, we started a crowdfunding campaign at the end of January, and you know it's it's been going slow. It's not like the New York City Drivers Co-op, which raised you know ten thousand in twenty four hours. But again, we don't have AOC's help <laughs> with uh, the marketing on that one. But um, so we have been we've received I think almost five thousand dollars in donations in the past couple months. So unfortunately, not what we were uh, hoping for, but that is not preventing us from starting up. We have had roughly 1,500 teachers pre-register for membership from over 70 or even 80 different countries at, at this point. So About 1,500, you said? Yes, yes. Um, that's, that oh, are all pre-registered. So the last couple of weeks since we've been registered, um, we've just been, you know, really busy working, you know, 12 to 18 hour days. My little, you know, my idea is now turned into a team of 18 people. There's officially 18 mm. members right now, the founding team. Um, you know, our financial analyst, he's in South Africa. Our uh, business manager, she's in South Carolina. Canada, uh, one of the directors is in Indonesia, Slovakia. So we're all over the place now and, you know, just lots of Zoom meetings. Um, so we're finalizing our, just the technicalities, you know, contracts and privacy policies and, you know, all that fun stuff. But we will be officially accepting membership applications. We're looking at May 10th. So just a couple weeks here. May 10th is when we are planning on accepting membership. So teachers will, you know, apply with their CV because we want to have high quality teachers on there. A lot of these platforms, they don't check or don't care. So, you know, plus them being owners too, we want to make sure we have all high quality people on board. Um, so after their applications approved, We'll have, you know, a probationary period, of course. And then once their application is approved, they will have to pay um, an onboarding fee. And that will be our mm -hmm. big upfront capital. So and that will be based on their location, um, mm -hmm. how much they're going to pay. You know, because we have a lot of teachers in low-income countries and stuff that are teaching, you know, um, math in, you know, Bangladesh. So, so, um, so it will be fair for everyone. And all members will be purchasing, you know, a one pound share. And uh, they'll be able to buy additional shares as well. Um, our structure is, we have a big structure. We have a lot of seats to fill. Once we start onboarding the members, we're going to have a lot of uh, seats and positions to fill with it. Yeah. But so, uh, so am I understanding correctly that the uh, $1 share that everybody will buy? Is that like the voting share, the membership share, yes, and then yes. there's an additional onboarding fee depending on where you live and, and, and those kind of considerations, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, the, the onboarding fee that converts to their one pound share once they complete their probationary period. Oh, I see. So, okay. They're not paying for those things separately. You're just paying the onboarding fee. And then initially, once yeah, you, just after because the it's so, it's so, period, because it's so international um, and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we have to do the onboarding fee because what happens if, I mean, we, we reject applications. Are we just going to send a one pound refunds to everyone all over the world? <laughs> I mean, that gotcha. gets a little ridiculous. So no, that's mm -hmm. why we, you know, need to do it that way. There's no other, mm -hmm. you know, 
way to do it. So yeah, once they um, apply, we'll accept their application, then they'll pay the onboarding fee. So then they can teach, they're good to go at that point. And then uh, it'll just be a 50 hour probationary period, which is just to be peer reviewed, make sure you can actually, you know, teach. So mm -hmm. what you're saying, but th yeah, that's about it. And then there'll be uh, a full member and then their contribution or not their contribution, sorry, their onboarding fee would convert to their one pound share um, upon, mm -hmm. you know, membership. Gotcha. Um, and so I'm, I, I take it then that you, you and maybe you said this, that you're uh, incorporated in the UK as, yes, a, are um, you, as a UK co-op. Is That turned out to be the best country to do this kind of international thing from. The only country. And I was really, I was very surprised mm. on that I was able to do it. I thought it was actually going to be a lot more difficult and a lot more expensive to pull it off. But uh, in the UK, none of the directors need to be UK citizens or residents, mm. which was really surprising because I haven't seen that in any other jurisdiction in the world. And I was shopping around, you know, Australia, different states, Canada, and I just didn't see that. So the fact that we could do that in the UK was automatically, you know, great for us. Um, secondly, you know, they have, they know cooperatives, you know, the it's been in their legal system for, you know, 148 years. So um, they have, you know, they have Cooperatives UK, which does, you know, pretty much everything for you or not everything for you, but they give you all the framework and all the support you need to, to do it. So that was the second reason why, because of all the support system, um, they had a very easy model. We're using the Community and Society Benefits Act the Cooperative and Community Society Benefit Act of 2014. And uh, it really just fit exactly what we wanted to do. We didn't have to make any adjust, or we didn't have to make very few adjustments to the model. So, which was nice. And then lastly, for having everyone be a freelancer, and not an employee, that worked in our benefit too. So therefore, Everyone gets paid at the end of the day. All benefits are paid out. Um, you know, all of that's done. And then we'll get the 20% corporate tax at the end of the year on our general fund. So for tax purposes, that was wonderful as well. So those are all the reasons why we picked the UK. Hmm. So did I just uh, hear that correctly? That uh, the way it's set up now is that teachers, uh, you get paid for at the end of every day. There's a no, set, geez, there's a, no. It's gonna now how the okay. now the constant you know funding. So most platforms mm -hmm. are charging between twenty five and even you know thirty five percent of wages, mm -hmm. and the teacher you know gets nothing out of it. Um, not even job security. They don't even get that. So how we're going to be doing it, um, teachers are going to be paying a flat 19%. Mm -hmm. And that 19%, you know, that will cover overhead and expenses. It will go into our general fund. And what we will be doing as soon as possible, probably maybe three to six months, we're going to set up accounts for teachers to accumulate paid time off, which mm -hmm. is unheard of for freelance teachers. That's just non-existent. So we will be the first and only to be doing that. And mm -hmm. that will be coming out of that 19% too. We'll have it based on, um, not sure if finance guys still figuring it out, but like about seven to 10 paydays off a year, according to their average salary. Um, mm -hmm. Teachers will be able to do three different things, which is actually going to solve a lot of problems teachers have. One is, you know, you have the marketplace. Teachers will be able to set their own price, create their own courses, offer what they, whatever they're qualified to teach. You know, it could be guitar, it could be graphic design, um, any language. So teachers can do that. So that will be a big plus for them. And also while teachers can set their own price, there's also going, teachers will be voting on what's reasonable, you know, because um, some of these platforms, you know, you'll have a, a American or British teacher, you know, living in Vietnam 
and they don't have a high cost of living. So they can outbid every other teacher by charging $4 a class. And mm-hmm. that really hurts the other teachers too. Mm-hmm. So here teachers, you know, they can set their own price, but they'll be able to, you know, set what's reasonable um, for their services. So, you know, I mean, not everyone's going to be happy because you can never please everyone, but it'll at least keep it, you know, a lot more fair and democratic in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I mean, it, it, the, the first thought I had about that is like, oh, well, maybe the prices, if I were a member, maybe I'd be putting this forward. Maybe the prices for the classes should be set on the basis of where the person paying the fee, the student is living just like your onboarding fee was. That would, that would not please any teacher. That would not work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it, that, you know, it was a horrible idea that, yeah, yeah. that, 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 abs- that just, that just really couldn't work because, you know, you have some teachers that are, you know, um, have masters in linguistics and whatnot. And then you have, you know, younger teachers that are just traveling around the world and teaching. So, you know, people definitely have their different needs and they have, we want to attract independent teachers that are, you know, they might be using Google classrooms for their classes or they're using Zoom, they're using something else. So they're already using five or six platforms $10 here, $20 here, you know, 15 here. Um, mm-hmm. So at the end of the month, they're already paying, you know, maybe a hundred, 150 bucks for all their things. So by having my cool class, we have everything all together in one. So teachers don't have to do that. They don't have to do administrative work. All they need to do is, you know, teach. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we will be marketing. We're going to compete like any other company. Um, we have to, uh, or else we won't make it. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, we are going to be doing starting off with um, ad campaigns in Spanish speaking countries. And since a lot of us are in Poland, uh, Poland, because we know the market very well, and it's very hot for, you know, uh, taking English classes here. It's really big and they pay well too. So, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, secondly, If a teacher wants to join but not be on the marketplace, this is where it gets really interesting and really cool. So let's say you have a teacher in, you know, in, you know, Bangladesh or in Nepal, where it's a very low cost of living country. They have, you know, their own students. Maybe they are paying for Zoom, you know, they're using Zoom out there too everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. their fee's not changing. That's still 12 bucks a month for them or 15 or whatever mm-hmm. it is. I don't look anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, so if that teacher, you know, say they're qualified to be on, you know, the marketplace, they're an English teacher, for example, they can set their price at, you know, 15, $20 an hour on the marketplace, but then say they have their own class of students in Bangladesh or whatever, that are paying $2 a class. Mm-hmm. That teacher, all they have to do is submit a request for a private class. So this price is not on the marketplace. It doesn't hurt any other teacher. They can set their own individual fees. They can take mm-hmm. their URL, post it in their local Facebook group. Hi, I'm an English teacher here. I charge $2 a class. Um, here's my URL. Send me a message and I'll set you up. Now a teacher can market in their own local community. So there's a marketplace price and then they can set their individual price based on where they're at. If they've had a student they've been teaching for a couple of years and they have a set fee, maybe, you know, uh, they're giving a discount to a neighbor or a family friend, they can still do that. And regardless on what they're charging, we're always going to be taking, you know, 19%, but that is going in, it's to their benefit. They're still going to be accumulating the benefits of the paid time off down the road. Um, You know, it's going to go into marketing to make sure that, you know, we're growing um, and Mm -hmm. that we, you know, that we do function. And then lastly, our third business model here, which is um, also going to be incredibly unique. There's a website called Teachers Pay Teachers. It's pretty popular. 
And ultimately what it is is teachers, they put on their own lesson plans, other teachers can search and buy them. And then, you know, the company's just taking, you know, the profit, you know, a, a fee for it. Um, there's no checks and balances with how good this material is. So there is actually, you know, bad content on there. And that gets expensive too. And, you know, they're making lots of money. The, you know, teachers pay teachers are. So what we're going to do is most teachers already create their own courses. They already make their mm -hmm. own classes, prepare their own material, do their own PowerPoints, all of that stuff. And usually it's extra work that they never get paid for. So here we're going to have a, like a social media, um, which will be for teachers only or members only, shall I say, teacher members. Um, they will be able to create and collaborate fun themed courses. The primary market is going to be children, but it won't be limited to children by any means. Um, so, you know, I teach mostly eight to 12 year olds. Uh, I have an outer space background in my classroom. So let's say I wanted to do a 20 lesson course on outer space for kids, you know, between eight and 12 years old at, you know, such a level, such a speaking level. So I can post that up in a group. Other teachers are like, oh, cool. I know a lot about this or, you know, I work for NASA, whatever it is. A couple of teachers can get together and I look at it with the same model as, you know, being a, being a rock band or, you know, a musical group. Get three teachers, the band members, they write songs, they pitch the, they pitch the music to the record company, the cooperative, my cool class. We'll have professional um, curriculum developers and educators on board to review the content. Um, either say it's great or pass it back off with suggestions for review. Once it's approved, we'll send it over to our in-house graphic design team, take that course, bring it to life. Now we're selling the course on the marketplace, not just the teachers, but now kids can buy the course. Um, and just like a band, you know, every time your album gets sold, you get royalties on it. Then teachers can, they'll be inspired to make cool, engaging, fun courses um, and get paid for it. <clears throat> so that'll be a big help for them. And then the teachers that can teach these courses now, because now you have a pool of teachers that will be qualified to teach these courses. We're going to pair up students with two teachers, one native speaker and one non-native speaker. Um, there's a lot of discrimination in ESL that native speakers are getting paid two, three, four times more than non-native speakers simply because they're native. Has nothing to do with qualifications, has nothing to do with education or background or nothing. So this will allow us to one, pay even the native speaker higher than what they're usually making. And then the non-native speaker, they're gonna be making the same exact pay. So that's gonna make a lot of people happy. Um, you know, we're going to have a more strict, you know, qualifications to teach these courses, you know, for quality control and whatnot. But, you know, non-native English teachers have a lot of benefits than, you know, non or than natives have. Uh, most native speakers don't, especially from the U.S., they don't speak a second language. We're all monolinguals. Um, whereas a lot of bilingual teachers, you know, they speak three, four, five, eight languages. So they understand better how someone needs to learn, especially explaining grammar. A native might be better with speech, pronunciation, you know, conversation, but there might not be nearly as good as explaining the actual grammar and structure, especially, you know, coming from another language. So by doing that, we're going to actually market against what every other company is marketing and saying, no, that's not true. Um, linguists, scientists, uh, educators for, you know, the past hundred years have been saying that, no, native speakers are not better teachers by default. 
And that's what all of these companies are marketing. Native speakers, native speakers only, blah, 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 blah. And it really comes down to a lot of, you know, racist and discriminatory hiring practices. The Chinese companies can do that because they're in China. That's illegal to do in the European Union. They don't care. You still see all the ads in every, you know, European teaching group every day. Um, so we're actually going to be, you know, launching a PR campaign, you know, against native speakerism too, which will, you know, that's going to turn a lot of heads. <clears throat> um, and we have science and, you know, Noam, Noam Chomsky and, <laughs> uh, you know, George Carlin, you know, all your famous linguists even back that up. So mm -hmm. that'll be really interesting to do. So is this something in all of your uh, classes that you're, you're, you're wanting to, to implement? Yeah, well, you know, so we're going to have the have... three. I'm sorry. Oh, so, so that when a student signs up on the platform, they'll be, they'll get a class with two, not one, but two teachers, one native, one non-native. Yeah, then Is alternate classes. One class will be with one teacher, the next will be with another. Okay. They'll still have the same two teachers, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, one funny thing. Not at thing, the same time. Yes. Right, not at the same time. Um, one funny thing that a lot of these um, ESL platforms for <clears throat> kids are doing is, you know, they're just, they allow the student to pick the teacher. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I've been teaching for, you know, going on six years now. There's no reason a four-year-old needs to pick their teacher. I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, it sounds like a, it's just nothing but a, a marketing, you know, a marketing ploy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, pick your teacher because then, you know, then you have these algorithms show up where they have all your Barbie and Ken looking teachers show up on the front page. The student can't get them anyhow because they're fully booked and then they're going to have to start going down. And yeah, it ends up just not being a fair system. So the cooperative, you know, we know our, we're going to know our teachers. We're going to make sure they're qualified. Um, so we're presenting them. No, this is our product. We're giving you a good teacher. You don't need to, you know, go through our teacher database, you know, we'll assign you two teachers that are going to fit, you know, your child or whatnot, um, mm. or fit your needs. So and did I, did I hear you correctly? I think maybe uh, th that, so you, with the two teachers that under your system, the native speaking teacher will get paid more than they're used to and the non-native will get paid the same, or is it? The other way oh, around. Oh, oh I, okay. Sorry, maybe I maybe I misspoke. <laughs> I had an early day. I woke up at four thirty, and I'm going on eight o'clock now. <laughs> um, That's why I just want to make sure that we're clear that it's the non-native sure, teachers, sure. right? Who no, will be experiencing both are, wage increase. Both are, both are going to be paying. Both are going to be paid the same. So for a non-native mm, okay. speaker, so someone in South Africa mm -hmm. or the Philippines that's used to making five to seven dollars an hour, they're going to be very very happy. Um, and then, more, yeah. and then your native speakers that are used to making, you know, 12 to 24, they're going to, you know, most, um, especially with Asian markets, they're paying, you know, 40 to $80 an hour for an English teacher. And these teachers are getting paid, like most of them are getting paid less than 20 of it. Or mm -hmm. certainly less than 25. I found very few jobs that are paying, you know, more than 30. So, you know, these companies are making huge profit. So, yeah, when the cooperative, you know, when we have our own courses, um, you know, we'll, that's where the cooperative will make a surplus for one. And then mm -hmm. teachers will be able to make a better wage too, all across the board. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to, you know, be firm on that model. Uh, by teachers being owners and spread all throughout the world, the whole worker cooperative model is going to spread. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows a teacher. Teachers are involved with everyone's lives. So by making this become, you know, international, oh, it's my class. Oh, it's my company. Oh, it's your company. Yeah, I'm a part owner. Okay, now mm -hmm. let's engage in a conversation. Wow, that's interesting. Let me look into it. And um, so, yeah, we really want to spread, you know, just the whole idea of, you know, 
especially platform cooperatives, because, you know, it's one of the most exploitative business models in, you know, recent times. So, you know, if we can inspire, you know, teams of more graphic designers to do this and bring it to the mainstream. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been involved with a lot of activism, like I said, for 20 years, but there isn't too much talk about worker cooperatives. Uh, you know, not even in, you know, anarchist or communist, or, you know, circles. Uh, there's still not much talk about worker cooperatives. You know, Bernie Sanders almost had a, you know, well, we won't get into the, poli the political side of it, but <laughs> enough people like Bernie Sanders and realize capitalism does not work for them. You know, you're younger, I'm, I'm 36 years old, um, but I would say safe that, you know, my age and below, especially in the United States, you know, capitalism is not working for us. It's not going to work for us. It's screwed us over completely. Um, but, you know, we think of, you know, socialism, you know, in the government sense of it, but no one looks at it in the worker sense of it, you know? I mean, what, you, let's say you sleep eight hours of the, out of the day, you, you work for eight hours a day, and then you, you know, you're doing your grocery shopping and maybe have a couple beers with your friends, you know, the other eight or something like that. But to spend a third of your life at work and not want the same kind of democracy there as you would expect from your government, which, you know, that's not going to end peacefully. <laughs> um, what's, the, what's the alternative? It's the workers' co-op. Um, and I personally think that, you know, there are a lot of intellectuals in the workers' co-op movement. They're amazing. I've met lots of them. I've, you know, done the webinars and whatnot. But there's a huge gap missing on how this can be put on a spoon and digested by a regular working class person that doesn't have time to read up a book. They don't, they don't have time to pick up a book. They don't want to watch a stupid webinar. They don't want to go on these, you know, weird websites that look like, I mean, you know, they don't want to do that. They're, they want to be spoken into a clear language. I mean, why do you think Donald Trump was so successful? He spoke, you know, he spoke the people's language. He spoke it very simple. I mean, not the right kind of people he attracted, of course, but the simpleton. Um, you know, so I look at it that I think it needs to be put, you know, a little bit more clear and say that, you know, this does have a chance of actually working and you know, capitalist economies such as the United States, mm -hmm. the UK, the European Union. And there are so many cooperatives, um, but, you know, the PR just isn't quite there because I think a lot more people would be willing to start up cooperatives if they, if they had a framework and they kind of just knew the basics and said, hey, this is an option, simply, you know, spoon feed it to them. Oh, cool. Now I want to learn a little more. Now I want to learn a little more. Instead of throwing a book at them, say, hey, read this. And then you open it up and there's financial terms. And, you know, you never went to college. You couldn't afford college. You know, you were working at a movie theater when you were 16 and flunked out of math class. You don't know what, you know, you don't understand Wall Street or shares or equity, and you really don't care. You just want a better life for yourself. So how can this be, you know, portrayed across to, you know, regular working young people that are doing a lot? You have lots of younger people doing big things and, you know, you have a lot more working, co um, you know, uh, co-working centers all over mm -hmm. uh, for freelancers. So, you know, they aren't necessarily co-ops, but the whole idea behind them is already there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be fair, um, I know plenty of people uh, who have degrees in things like economics that <laughs> also don't understand the financial terms or, you know, <laughs> their, their eyes also glaze over. Um, uh, not necessarily like academia is full of geniuses <laughs> yeah <laughs> speaking yeah, is speaking as a former uh member um <laughs> the so 
I'm interested in a, in a couple of things and just uh, forgive my ignorance about the, you know, how these things normally work, but as a teacher, if I'm say one of these 1500 uh, pre-registered people wanting to become a member. So if I, I start teaching on the platform, offering my classes, um, once I've completed that labor, is, am I, does, do I get credited in an account that then gets cashed out once a month or twice a month or it does it, yes. do I have yeah, access yeah, to it'll, that it'll whenever yeah, it'll or, account, and then we'll be doing monthly payouts to all the teachers. Monthly payouts. Okay. All yeah. right. And we're um, setting up multiple payment platforms because uh, teachers are in different places, not, you know, mm-hmm. tra- transfer wise isn't available everywhere. Payoneer is not available everywhere. We'll have mm-hmm. WeChat to, for, you know, an Asian market, China, Vietnam, um, Thailand. So, yeah. Okay. And then you'll get paid. Then there'll be monthly payouts with it. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but, my other question for you is, uh, you know, so it sounds like now you've got 18, uh, you know, members, as it were, and you've got 1,500 lined up. Um, so, and that there's kind of implicit, you know, or you know, explicitly what you're talking about, there's a, a sorting process and a kind of, you know, judging who is, who is going to be worthy, as it were, to be on the platform and, and who maybe doesn't make the cut. So, how do 18 people accomplish that? It is just my, I'm just wondering well, about the logistics. Well, well so, okay. Not, so re- re- realistically, you know, when, you know, when you um, have a, a Facebook event and, you know, it says, mm-hmm. you know, 500 people are going, but 40 people show up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've had 1500 teachers sign pre-register. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we send out emails, um, emails, you know, a couple times a week, keeping updates, more information. So we're keeping everyone up to date. And through our, you know, our bulk emailing program, we know how many people actually open their emails, which is roughly around 52%. Um, but I will say that the 52% of people that are checking their emails have also joined our private Facebook group. And we sit at around 750. So mm-hmm really just, you know, half. So um, even starting on with 750 teachers, I don't expect everyone's going to sign up in one day. And we're Mm -hmm. going to have uh, about, uh, we're planning on onboarding on or accepting the applications May 10th. And then we're hoping to have the website, you know, ready launch classes running on June 14th. So that will allow time for us to kind of like flip over and get that marketing going for, you know, that first month and start, you know, building engagement, getting students to start to, you know, sign up for pre-enrollments, offer, you know, some discounts for, you know, the first students on. I'll get teachers Mm -hmm. time to go through cooperative training. You know, they're going to have to complete um, training, one, how to use the platform, two, all about cooperatives and how my cool class works and their benefits and, how the structure is and how they can get involved. Um, so they'll have plenty of time to learn everything. They'll need to complete like, you know, little quizzes and tests on what they read. Cause we wanna make sure, you know, everyone understands what a worker cooperative is too, of course. Um, and we've been pretty good about feeding that information in all those, you know, small doses, easy to digest um, and getting, you know, more and more complex with the information. So it actually has been working with our 750 teachers in our group. A lot of people are really starting to look into it. We're posting lots of resources, um, you know, from all over the world, YouTube videos, um, short articles, blogs, especially a lot of things, you know, that a lot of the driver cooperatives that are starting to pop up, you know, all over, Mm -hmm. um, as well as the delivery drivers and, really just making a point for teachers to understand that you are a gig worker. Just because you're a teacher doesn't mean you're not a gig worker. You're still a gig worker. You know, even a freelance lawyer is still a gig worker. So um, we're just really trying to make that clear. And now that more and more people are saying, hey, I actually am a gig worker. Wow. Wow. I don't know anything about what these big companies are doing. Um, 
you know, the company I'm currently with, they congratulated that they congratulated all the teachers that they got 1.2 million in funding last August. Big email, congratulations, we're going to do all these new awesome things. You teachers are amazing, blah, 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 blah. Three weeks later, they changed our point system, which immediately just cut everyone's pay. Um, you know, I started looking at press releases in Chinese, translating the pages, and the lead investors for that round of funding, they were boasting of a two to three time return within a couple years. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And, you know, so I'm putting this information together. You can't get too much because it's a private company, you know, with short of espionage, you can't get the details, mm -hmm. but you can still paint a picture. You can paint a picture on, hey, this is how this business works. This is what happened with our company. So why do you think our company did something different than what every other company is doing? I mean... Then teacher like, wow, okay, maybe you got something, you know, going on here. And this isn't just with my company. A lot of the other language platforms have been doing the same exact thing, especially since the pandemic. They've had to up their resources. They've grown. Um, you know, I was teaching, you know, 20 classes a day at the beginning of the pandemic to Chinese children. I teach mostly Chinese children. Um, and it was insane, but now they've oversaturated the platform and now I'm, you know, down half of that with my students. Uh, the platform is even going to teachers that have had long-term students and telling the student, oh, you've been with your teacher for too long. I think it's time you try a new teacher. And then some teachers um, are getting messages saying, why can't you teach me anymore? And the teacher's saying, I never said that. You just stopped booking lessons with me. Oh, well, the head teacher said I needed to try another teacher or you're going on vacation or you're reducing your availability. And the teacher's like, no, that never happened. And then the student complains, I want my teacher back. And they're like, okay, here you go. And boom, then you get your student back. But, you know, they're doing it all on, they're doing it all on purpose. And it's ridiculous. And I think um, by seeing the increasing complaints for the past, you know, year, year and a half, um, you know, platforms are allowing teachers to be sexually harassed by students and the platform is not doing anything about it at all. Um, you know, a lot of female teachers, you know, they're getting stalker messages, they're getting flashed, um, they're getting weird requests, um, you know, and the platforms don't care. They don't. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, just block the user. But they can sign up as another user. Why don't block their IP? Well, we don't want to do that just in case they spend more money. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they're, you know, it's just, it's just a big mess. So I think enough teachers are fed up. And once we are off the ground and we are operating, then I think that's when the more and more teachers are going to join and support this. Um, because of the lack of knowledge about worker co-ops and, you know, they think of it as like just some hippie commune in a forest or a food co-op. They don't picture it as mm -hmm. a workers co-op. So I think a lot of people are standing on the sidelines right now, just kind of waiting to see what happens, but they're ready to jump on once it looks like it's a sure thing. So um, yeah, I'm very mm -hmm. optimistic. Uh, I'm very optimistic about this project, and so is the rest of the team. Sure. Um, and I don't know if you want to get the specific or not, but I'm always one to to just ask the questions that are on my mind, whether they're appropriate sure. or not. So like, um, and and I, you know, maybe you don't know for sure yet, but like, what would be like, say. I'm going to, you know, teach flute on your platform um, or I'm going to teach English. I, I actually did a little ESL teaching as somebody who was completely unqualified in Nepal years and years ago. Um, <laughs> so let's say I was going to, you know, uh, do that uh, from the U.S., just 
living in Bend America, uh, w- what's the onboarding fee look like? Are we talking a couple hundred dollars, thousands of dollars? No, Pins, oh, wait, wait. no actually, um, high income countries such as, you know, US, mm-hmm. um, 25 pounds. Those are like 30 bucks, probably. $34, $34. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, that's certainly cheaper than I was expecting and, you know, cheaper than most uh, worker co-op membership fees. Um, I thought maybe you w- would have to be charging more to, uh, to cover the platform or something, but you know, that's, that's excellent. Um, you know, um, we're everyone right now here is pretty much, you know, working on a, mostly on a volunteer, actually no one is getting paid, but um, you know, mm-hmm. we will be invoicing for our previous, you know, labor of course to be paid out, you know, mm-hmm. the next couple of years. But um, no, we're all working our asses off right now, and we haven't seen a penny from it yet. Uh, <laughs> um, That's how it goes no, when um, you're setting up a co-op. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, but um, our overhead for being a global platform, you know, most of these platforms have you know ten to thirty to fifty thousand teachers on them, um, and once we get to a certain size, it's not going to cost much more to dramatically scale. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, not necessarily for your, your, your piece, but, (laughs) um, but, you know, off the books, but we're going to be able to operate with for under a hundred thousand pounds a month. And if we have a thousand or 2000 teachers on board generating, you know, one to 2000, you know, uh, a month of revenue with the 20, I mean, it really covers itself quite quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's mm-hmm. covering a whole staff, you know, employees, full-time workers uh, behind the scenes, putting in the general fund. We already have developers and programmers ready to start working as members and join as members with the co-op once we can start funding it. Um, You know, we have our WordPress site and then we are Mm -hmm. paying for a white label learning management system, which we're just paying to get customized. And then we have a, you know, a monthly fee with it. But again, for what we're doing, it's not unmanageable. Um, Our overhead will actually be kept quite low and, you know, we're also asking teachers, well, we're telling teachers, um, you know, while we will be marketing, you know, social media, Google, whatever, like any other business, um, then we are also expecting teachers to do their own marketing too. tell people it's their mm-hmm. company now. It's not, oh, I'm getting ripped off by someone else. If you want English lessons with me, let's do it on Zoom and you can just wire mm-hmm. me, you know, money in my PayPal. It's not going to be like that anymore. So we're going to be saying, hey, teachers, just tell everyone about us. If we have a thousand teachers telling people about us and we run a couple, you know, minimal you know, social media marketing campaigns, um, we're going to take all the good teachers. All the good teachers from these mm-hmm. other platforms are going to see a benefit in my cool class. When we get the reputation of having better teachers, we can charge more. Teachers can mm-hmm. charge more. Um, you know, students, uh, we want to do a lot of marketing in Brazil. Uh, one, lots of, you know, English teaching in Brazil is huge and it's a large country. And Brazil also has tons of worker cooperatives similar to the UK where they know what one is. So yeah, if, um, a average Brazilian family, you know, is looking for English lessons or any other kind of lesson and they saw that a co-op was an option, they're probably going to choose that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so um, yeah. uh, tell me just a little bit. Uh, we get, I think we need to probably should be wrapping up here. We're, we're hitting close to an hour. Um, yeah, sure. But it, just uh, how the membership structure works. So, and, and, and how democracy is, is, uh, is realized in your co-op. So is it, uh, I'm, is it a, Standard board structure, you have an yeah, AGM yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, people yeah, we have a, board yeah. members, that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, exactly. So uh, standard standard co-op structure, um, you know, teach, teachers. <laughs> There's no the, such thing as a standard structure well, now. But. I mean, well, I guess standard in the UK, standard in the... Okay, all right. Standard in the UK, shall I say. Um, right now, yeah, there's uh, seven board directors. Um mm-hmm. 
again, we still have a lot of missing pieces because we don't have all the people yet. So, you know, we're going to be filling all those spots as need be, you know, such as, you know, an advisory board, um, a, a risk, you know, um, risk assessment team. Um, we have a lot of people that we're going to be hiring very soon. So, yeah, 18 of us yes. are doing, you know, 10 jobs each right now. Um, but what we are going to do is we do have on our WordPress site, we're building a whole members social media platform there. Um, where I was saying, you know, teachers can create, you know, courses and collaborate. There's going to be forums too. Um, we're building, we have the same functions as Lumio does, actually. We're going to have the same functions oh, with voting. So teachers, if there's a problem, you know, then they can upvote it, they can downvote it. Um, issues that are being addressed and talked about most on the top, we can maybe address X amount of issues every month, you know, address them, mm -hmm. vote on them. So there will be a big community of lots of people talking and teachers teaching online. It is just a big old social media. Um, teachers love to gossip too and talk and, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, so yeah, by having it all built up on, you know, a social media platform that, um, you know, we'll have even, you know, whistleblowing sheet in case there's any issues, we'll have, um, you know, ongoing information, we'll, we'll have regular, we will have regular meetings, we'll try to do it, you know, probably start off every four months at first, and then maybe eventually do it every month as we have the as we have the power and the people to make everything happen that way. So, Great. so yeah, it will be very cool. Everyone of course, you know, can run for different positions. Uh, teachers will be voting for their um, admin staff, like a mentor. We'll have teachers in different groups, just so we don't have a thousand teachers running around. We'll have a little bit more organized and smaller groups, depending on, you know, language or skill and, whatnot depending mm -hmm. on what we get in there and we'll just organize as the see fit great um so just uh where you know people who are interested either as uh, teachers um, or even maybe as students where can they get in uh get a hold of you guys what's your website go ahead um this will be I'd give us to the co-op website. We have two. We have our subdomain focused on the cooperative and the teachers. And then we have, you know, what's going to be for the students and you know, the marketing. So it's mycoolclass.com. And then we have our subdomain, which is co-op.mycoolclass.com.